What is the name of this lesson? Birth of the Forerunner. Birth of the Forerunner. What was the Forerunner's, forerunner's name? Anybody know what that was? Yes. The Forerunner. This was a Forerunner of Jesus. Lesson is, our lesson is picking up Luke chapter 1 verse 57. Uh, you guys had a lesson a few Sundays ago that your, that your dad taught, that was a CD talk, that was uh, talking about prophecy of Jesus' birth. <clears throat> so in that lesson, Y'all remember that? Y'all remember being here and then listening? Yeah. Okay. I said that because I was I started to ask you, do you remember what the lesson was about? I remember being there. Okay, alright. <laughs> alright, so uh, <clears throat> this lesson begins. Well, we're, we're just gonna start off reading and we'll, we'll bring the context later on. So we gotta, we gotta move on. Chloe, I want you to start us off. Luke chapter 1, read the first two verses, verses, verses 57 and 58. Now Elizabeth's full, read along. Time, now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. Okay, now Elizabeth's full time that she should be delivered. So what is a full time of a pregnancy? Nine months. Nine months. <laughs> Nine months. <laughs> um, now if you guys remember... In that first lesson of this book, of this quarter, the Bible says that Elizabeth was six months pregnant when she went to Mary's house. Y'all remember when she went to Mary's house? Okay, I'm sorry. Elizabeth was six months pregnant when Mary came to Elizabeth's house. And, and Elizabeth... When Mary came to Elizabeth's house, and the Bible says Mary saluted Elizabeth, the babe leaped. You remember that? In, in Elizabeth's womb, right? Right. Remember that? Yes. And, well, so so that was uh, six, Luke one twenty six says that was a sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. So now, when a full nine months, she brought forth a son. Okay, keep reading. Verse 58. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had shown great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced in her. Now, the, the, the Lord showed great mercy. Elizabeth was barren. The, 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 the great mercy, Elizabeth couldn't have children. All right? Right. This was a big deal back then. Elizabeth could not have children. So when a woman can't have children, that's ca she's called barren. barren. Also, Elizabeth was very old when she got pregnant. Now, her not being able to have children was a big deal in that culture. And right here, when you read the past, you must read you must read the past with past eyes. So in that culture, it was a big deal if you didn't have children. So her being able to have children was so, it was God's mercy, right? That's why, that's why they say uh, they rejoice and God has showed great mercy upon her, right? Because she had this child. And, and she wasn't supposed to have the child. There was two, there, there was two issues that, that she had. Yes, sir? I hope that's not true. He's playing sound music. Yeah. It's going to be all right. <laughs> So <clears throat> there were two there were two issues. There, there were two things that was wrong with Elizabeth. She was barren. She was barren. She was old. And she was old. That, that, that wasn't wrong, but it was uh, it was unique in this birth. Alright, chosen. Read the next two verses. Verses 58 and 59 and 60. I'm sorry. Then it came to pass that on the eighth day, 
And they came to circumcise the child, mm -hmm. and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. On the eighth, on, on which day? The eighth day. The eighth day. You, you know, I, I don't ever run through scripture because really, we have to understand. When God speaks a word, if you don't understand the word that he's saying, you're not going to get what he told you. Right. Right? right? So on the eighth day, on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child. That was the custom back then, on the eighth day. In other words, today, we name a child when it's born. They don't do, even to this day in many cultures, they don't name the child when he's born. And, and, and it's not just the mother and father that names a child. This is crucial. I want you to understand this. This was a, this is the way it was. So on, it says it came to pass on the eighth day that they came to circumcise a child, and says what, Joseph? And his mother answered and said, "No, no, re re fin finish. Did you finish reading fifty-nine? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. So and they called him what? Zacharias. After the name of his father. Uh, read the next verse." And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. So now, I, I, what I want you guys to understand is, today, like in this culture, we name a children on, on, when they're born. In that day, and even in cultures, different cultures, they do, I just, somebody just told me this the other day, that they do this, uh, the Igbo people in, in Africa. They still, but on the eighth day, they circumcise a child, a male child, uh, and, and they name them. Now, it's not just the mother and father. The whole extended family come together. And they, because you got to see, it, the, the mother didn't name them. They, this was odd because the mother didn't name him Zacharias. The Bible says they call him Zacharias. And this is the way it's done. The community names a child, and they usually name them after a family member. The first son is always named, always, even to this day. They said grandparents are first priority, but they have to go through all of the names of the relatives first, right? And this is this is so this is why they did that. So so they named the child Zacharias after his father because that was typical what they did. Met, uh, uh, Elizabeth Mary said no. Why did Mary say no? Now you, this is not. Huh? I was gonna say. Didn't the angel say his name would be John? Exactly, exactly. Because God had already told her what his her child's name was going to be. So the people didn't know. People were just doing what they had already, and that's a good tradition. But John was a unique child. He had a, he had a mission. So she said, "No, his name shall be called John." Now I must say this: she these were Hebrews. They didn't speak English. John is an English name. So the name that she actually named him was not John. His name was uh, Yochanan. That was the Hebrew name. And it actually means God is great. Jehovah is great. God is great. So, that's, so that was what she actually said. And when we speak English, it's no big deal. But I'm just saying, what she actually said was his name was, his name was actually Yochanan. But we call him John. So we're just reading English. So, so, but she said, no, his name is going to be John, okay, then, read the next three verses, 61 through 63. And they said unto her, there is none okay. of thy kindred that is called by this name. See, see, they they didn't understand it. Well, what did they say? Read it again. And they said unto her, there is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. So they, it didn't make no sense, right? There, none of your people are called John or your common or whatever. Keep reading. And they made signs to his father. Uh, he would have been called. So now, the woman, the mother, saying, no, his name is not, he's not going to be named after his father. So they asked the father, okay, what do you say about this? Right? Keep reading. And he asked for a writing, tab the writing table and wrote, saying, his name is John, and they marveled all. Now, why didn't he just tell them? He Anybody couldn't, remember? Huh? He couldn't talk. He couldn't talk. Good. Why, why couldn't he? Y'all remember the story? Because he couldn't. God closed him not to, the uh, angel closed him not to. Right, right. Now, I will say this. Uh, I don't, the, the, the Bible says that uh, he didn't, the Bible says the angel says you shall be dumb because you didn't believe what I said. Mm -hmm. But Mary also asked how can these things be? And she wasn't, you know, I can't. I can't say why Zacharias was 
made to be dumb, you know, the Bible don't say. How did he say it? How did he, like, what did he say that made him? That's my point. It, it, the Bible don't say it. I mean, you can assume that he had an attitude or whatever, but the Bible don't say it. So I just, if the Bible don't say it, I'll leave it alone. I mean, you know, whatever. <clears throat> All I know is that Zach, Zacharias couldn't speak. So, so that's what, uh, so he asked for a writing tablet and wrote his name, saying his name is John. You'll come. His name is John. But they all marveled. They was like, wow. I mean, the mother and father was in agreement on this. Okay? That was something. Uh, Delmar, read the next three verses, please. And his mouth was opened immediately. Verse 64, read on. And his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake. And praise God. So he, he at that when he when he wrote down in agreement with what God had told him through the angel, then his mouth was open. And he the first thing he did <laughs> was what? Praise God. Praise God. First thing he did. Keep reading that one. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. He has visited and redeemed his people. And I'll just say this for context. Now, I said his name, John's name was Yochanan, and actually Elizabeth's name was actually uh, Elisheba. Elisheba. That was the, 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 these were all Hebrew names, but in the English, you know, they call her Elizabeth, no big deal, but I'm just saying that was what they actually said. I put myself in the pages when I read the Bible. I really, it's, just, you know, it's, it's real. It's not like reading Santa Claus or whatever. You know, this is real stuff. So I want to know what actually happened. But anyway, it's no big deal. But you know, I, so so Elizabeth's name was actually Elisheba. It was El, which was God, and Sheba, which means uh, it's great. I think. So anyway, that that, that was her Hebrew name. So what Delmar just read. Mm -hmm. um, blessed be the Lord God Now this is who talking Jesus. Verse 16 Blessed be the Lord God of Israel Who is, who is this talking? Zacharias Zacharias He's praising God He just he can talk now <laughs> So he's praising God He said Blessed be the Lord God of Israel For he has visited and redeemed his people What, what does the word redeem mean? To bring back Bring back or to purchase, purchase. To buy back mm -hmm. Right uh, was that your third verse, Del Delmar? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Cayman, read the next four verses, please. 69 through 73. And hath raised up in horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, mm -hmm. as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. So he's saying that God had prophesied this. This this prophecy is coming to pass. Salvation is coming to us. He's excited, and his son is a part of this. That's an exciting thing. Um, God had prophesied a horn of salvation, and in other words, a strength. The word horn really meant the strength. Strength of salvation. Salvation is coming to Israel, to the house of David. Um, Read verse 71. And that we should be saved from our enemies. Oh, okay. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, mm -hmm. the oath which he sware to our father Abraham. God had promised this to our father, our ancestor, Abraham. Mm -hmm. This stuff is coming to pass. When God had told you something and you see it coming to pass, that's an exciting thing. A, but we need, we, need, we need to know what he said. Chloe, read the next three verses, 74 through 76, please. And he would grant unto us that we may deliver the dead of our enemies and serve them without fear. So, so, so part of that promise is that we would be delivered out of the hands of our enemies so that we can serve him without fear. That makes me think about it, uh, Egypt. When they, when they were delivered out of Egypt, they said, we want to go out and do what? We want to worship the Lord, right? For three days in the wilderness. That's what they was asking. Say, well, let my people go so we can go worship our God. You can't really worship God and holiness in bondage. So, so he says, salvation has came to us. He promised it to Abraham so that we could be delivered out of the hands of our enemies 
and might serve him without fear. Now I must say, at this time they were actually under the uh, under the uh, rulership of Romans, right? That that's kind of the context of what he was talking about. But but it's also talking about uh, it's also talking about uh, forgiveness of sins. He's, he's going he's to make that plain too. Uh, was that all your verses? Yes. Keep reading. Uh, was that all your verses? In holiness, we serve him without fear in holiness, holiness and righteousness before him in his presence all the days of our life. Keep reading. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord. So thou, child, now, now, what child, who is he talking about now? Thou, child, he's talking about his son. John. John. Thou child, my child, thou child, you're probably looking at this child, thou child shall be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way. Who, who was the Lord? The Lord was Jesus. Yes. So he's saying, you're going to go before Jesus, or you're going to come before Jesus. God sent John in the spirit of Elijah to prepare the way for Jesus to come, right? John came preaching repentance for the forgiveness of sins. But John was a forerunner to Jesus. This was prophesied that there would be one come before him that would set, bring the hearts of the children to the fathers, the hearts of the fathers to the children, all of that. So, so this, was prop, this was exciting. Whew, I'm getting chills. All right. Um, Caden, read verse 77 and 78, please. To give knowledge of salvation unto the people by the remission of their sins. Now this is this is a big deal. He said to give knowledge of what? Salvation. Salvation. Free. Unto his people by the remission of what? Their sins. Now, giving knowledge of salvation by the remission of sin. So your sins have to be forgiven before you can receive salvation. Jesus died on the cross so we may have eternal life. But, let me explain something to you. Jesus had to die. Why would he have to die? Now, I know we said, you know, he had to die so that we can be forgiven. But this was part of the old covenant. Remember, they, now they were still under the old covenant until Jesus died. So even when Jesus was on the earth, they were still under the old covenant. Jesus died, and when he died, that brought us into a new covenant. But he was still living at that time, right? So, so they were still under the old covenant. So, so when Jesus died, Jesus died. Okay, let, let me ask y'all this. Y'all been in this class for years. In the old covenant, how was your sins forgiven? What did you have to do to be forgiven? Um, sacrifice. Sacrifice. That's it. I thought they were just pushed back. Mm -hmm. So they were just pushed back if you said. Push back. Well, okay. That was the only way to atone or right. It, it wasn't the forgiveness that Jesus gave. You're right. But that was the only forgiveness of sins, right? But it had to be a sacrifice. This is the point. So Jesus dying on the cross was the sacrifice for sin. So he said to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of sin. So you have to get our sins forgiven. The blood of Jesus cleanses us of all our sins. And once your sins are forgiven, then you can receive salvation. That's how it works. So salvation is not, it, it, salvation is not just the forgiveness of sins. Salvation is eternal life, which begins, and this is what I want y'all to get. Salvation begins, salvation does not begin on judgment day. Did you know that? Salvation don't begin when you get to heaven. Salvation begins the day, according to the Bible, salvation again begins when you accept Jesus into your heart. That's when it begins. That's when your eternal life begins. It don't begin when you go to heaven. Heaven is a package, but salvation don't begin when you die. It begins when you accept Jesus into your heart, while you're still living. So salvation is to give you life. Everything, nothing is supposed to be missing in salvation. When you receive salvation, every, nothing is supposed to be missing in your life. Spiritually, naturally, nothing. You have a complete package once you 
receive the God's gift of salvation. But you can't receive the gift with unforgiven sins, right? So, so Jesus' blood cleanses us from our sins. Now we can receive salvation. Does that make sense? That's, that's how. So I, but I, want, I want you to understand salvation is not just heaven. I don't want you to think that you're, gonna, you know, you're only going to be saved when you go to heaven. No, you're saved now. Jesus died so you might live. Right? Jesus died so you might live today. It's a beautiful, powerful thing. All right. So anyway, so 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 Zacharias is saying to give the knowledge, and this is what I'm teaching you guys, the knowledge of salvation. Because a lot of people don't really understand what salvation is, even though the Bible says it. But anyway, um, who was reading? Who was reading? That one? No, I had to read 78. Okay, read 78. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high has visited us. Through the tender mercy, so he says, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy, that's all God's mercy. Whereby the day spring, or the new day, that's really what the day, the word day spring really meant the dawn. The day spring, the dawning, or a new day. Right? Let's talk about a new day. You really have a new day. When you accept Jesus in your heart, you literally have a new day. <coughs> That's why, so this is why we're here all the time. This is why we're in Sunday school. This is why we're doing all of this stuff. Because salvation is a new, it's totally new. We have to be renewed in our minds. Mind. That's a beautiful thing. And in our spirits, but our spirits get saved. But we have to constantly renew our minds, right? Only the truth makes you free. All right, um, who wants to? Cayman, my oh man, bring us home, verse 79. To give light to them that sit in the darkness and in the shadows of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Woo, into the way of peace. Beautiful. 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 That is a lesson. Go to text, thou child shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way. Woo! Good. All right, let's get out of here. Take the chain. Did y'all get me? Did y'all learn anything? Yes, sir. Good. 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 Thank you for the invitation, Rory. I smiled when I saw that. I said, she is so sweet. I'm saying. Huh? <laughs> 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 She's like, ha 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 ha. <laughs> Alright, heads bowed, eyes closed, minds on Jesus. Thank you, Father God. We thank you once again for what you've done by your spirit. Bless these children. I thank you for the hedge of protection that you keep around their minds, around their spirits, around their bodies. And I thank you that you are constantly working it out in the house that you are. Thank you, Father, for keeping them. Thank you for your word. Your word is life. Thank you for increase in Jesus' name. Our Father, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.